Okay, uh, today we're going to look at, this is a slight modification of the code that I showed you from SparkFun the other day. Uh, very little bit has changed. Um, basically here, we, we, as I said, we're, we're just setting up some variables. We're initiate them in our uh, first void loop there, or void setup. But coming down, what I've changed is inside our void loop here. Uh, we're still grabbing the analog information and converting it to a number between 0 and 127, but you'll see that I broke up uh, the three different buttons before all three buttons played the same note. Um, in this case, I say, if button 1 do this, if button 2 do this, if button 3 do this, and basically it's the same thing. The information that's changing is just right here, which before was our note variable. This time I said to actual notes and uh, I will show you in the future how to figure out what number is what note on the MIDI controller. Uh, and we're sending that information to be played through our synthesizer. And then if a button's not being pressed, so if, if none of those three buttons are being pressed, we're going to do this. And basically we're just going to play a note, and that note's going to be decided based on our uh, little potentiometer knob that we have on the uh, shield and uh, it's going to play it at a velocity of 0x45 delay for a tenth of a second and then it's going to send the same thing but I'm putting the velocity down to zero now if you remember in the fault code when you pressed a button that note just held and played forever until you hit panic on your synthesizer to kill the sound setting the note back to zero will basically turn that note off. So basically every time I press, uh, or not every time I press a button because that's based on the uh, button presses, but every time a button's not being pressed, it's going to loop a tenth of a second and it's going to um, basically play a note based on where the potentiometer knob is for a tenth of a second and then turn off. So we should get a very high rate of notes going. Uh, so We'll compile that and upload it. Remember not to have the shield connected while you're uh, uploading the code because the shield uses your serial communications so you're not able to program while the shield is connected. Um, I've already done that, so let's go here. I've got Jack D running with a ZYN add sub effect. I've got my MIDI controller connected to ZYN add sub effect. Let me turn the volume up here and you'll hear what notes our Arduino is playing. So as I turn the knob one way, the notes go lower. When I turn it the other way, they go higher. I can also change my instrument in here in ZY and add some effect. So I'm playing all this one knob. And uh, if I want, I can press a key or a button on the Arduino board. And basically it plays whatever note I have that set to and the, the knob portion of the program kind of takes a hold until I let go of the button. Let's get a better, uh, let's get a little higher pitched here. Okay, so now you can hear the do -do 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 of the music and I'll press another key and holds the note, whatever note I have that button uh, programmed to play. When I let go, change the instrument again. And I'll press the third button, and it holds it. When I let go, it starts playing again based on where the knob is. And I can turn the knob. You can get some neat sounds just by going basically through the scales on the keyboard and just playing different notes, turning this knob back and forth. So uh, that was just a pretty quick look, simple modification of the code, and we got something neat going on. I'll have more on this MIDI controller or MIDI, MIDI shield for the Arduino board coming up in the near future. Thanks for watching, and uh, visit filmsbychris.com for more video tutorials like this.